So let's have a tour of the brewery. So actually we built the place here, the manor, um, three years ago, but it took a long time to actually get inside the building. And then we had a lot of work for the renovation because the manor was definitely not in the shape it is today. So we first worked to be able to house our family here because we were planning to you know, live and work in the same place. And as soon as we could live with our family and have an apartment for friends and family coming to give a hand and help us, we started working on the brewery and this took a while. So as you can see, we had to build some extensions because even the manor wasn't big enough for a uh, brewery since we had a lot of molds that you can see here. All the machines that we hit here uh, below the apartment, uh, the friends and family's apartment. Um, and of course the brewery, which is here. So let me open it so you can have a look. What's your capacity in terms of the air, for the air, for the air? So here we brew 10 hectoliters uh, in one brew. Okay. And yeah, yeah. yeah, so 1,000 liters. Yeah. So the capacity here is 10 hectoliters per brew day. Um, and we're planning for the first year to brew around 500 uh, hectoliters. Yeah. And so you've already released uh, quite a few beers, right, already. Um, yeah. How many beer, um, different types of beers? I saw there was a for stout. Now, was a for now it was six uh, beer to start the brewery but we will uh, be more, uh, <laughs> we need some time. <laughs> we are uh, in the world of uh, craft beer, we made always some new beer and uh, I don't feel that I have to do that. And I'm uh, not lazy, but uh, I need time to understand my brew kit and uh, the beer uh, we, we have done here and uh, receive some uh, some news from the people who taste the beer. So we have to take some time. And uh, for the two first year, we have uh, no pressure to make some new beer. We just have to understand the kit and uh, make the beer we, we love to drink first. So maybe we are not in a rush to make uh, 10 beer or, or 20 beer by no, year. No, that's the crazy craft mentality, isn't it? Uh, yes. Whereas you have uh, Dr. Van der Kroner, Ronald, yeah. who's saying perfect it with each round yeah. and get it better. There's a different so, philosophy. Yeah. So here we, we choose to make uh, five beer and uh, we have to work on that five beer to, to make it better at the end of the year. And it's the plan for us. And the plan is you have a full range? What do you have? You have a blonde, of course, you have a... Um, Actually, we started start? with a pale ale, but pale we ale. also have uh, an IPA. <coughs> we have uh, an Imperial Stout. Um, we have a yes, Session IPA and we have a Grisette, which is an old, you know, recipe from the area. Actually, <coughs> it's uh, a recipe that used to be made in the area of Liège for the people working in mine coals. So they shouldn't be drinking very strong beer. So Grisette is only 4%, so they could work. Three? Uh, here it's four, but it used to be yeah, very light Three. beers. Okay. It's like yeah. almost and like the farmhouse exactly. kind of uh, yeah. beer exactly. that workers could drink. And yeah. it's also beer with a lot of wheat, which make it, uh, makes it, it was a very nice color. You know, it's bright yellow, it's pretty, it's uh, and it's local, so we both like to, you know, we like North American beers. So we're very inspired by what we learn and taste in Canada and US. But on the other hand, we also like to have some beers which are inspired by the Belgian tradition that we come from. So the Grisette is really in this range. And so right now it's just a term of consolidation, getting your description. Who's who are you distributing? Is the local area, or do you? Uh, or is that too far ahead for you right now? For us, it's the the, the first thing is to uh, to receive the people from the village and uh, from the area. Then and we want they understand what we are doing here, and we receive a lot of uh, requests for some beer in uh, Liège or in Brussels, but. Uh, 
I, I think that they, they, they need to understand what we are doing and they are proud because they work in the place for two years with us. And all the village was uh, really proud of us, and uh, we feel that. And uh, we have now to work on the beer and uh, explain what we are doing here. And the first thing for us is to bring some people here. It's not that I don't care to sell my beer outside, but uh, it's not the point for us. We, are, we want to receive some people here that they understand the place, see the forest, the place, and enjoy the beer here. I feel that uh, if they come here and drink the beer fresh from the tank here, it's going to be better for, uh, for me, because I can speak about what I am doing here, and uh, they will understand uh, where we are going. Because now I feel with the craft beer scene, I feel that sometimes the brewer is not understand. The people drink the beer, cook the beer, and maybe they don't just don't understand what the what was the point of the brewer. And uh, it's why it's important for us to receive the people and explain why we are making that beer with that recipe and uh, that kind of hop or not. And uh, so. It's also <laughs> important to have a lot of feedback from our customers in the beginning because it's going to help us, you know, develop, improve our beers. So that's the best way, definitely, to meet with them, to be welcoming them in the brew pub. So, and it, it, it was the whole point for us. It's not just making beer or a lot of beers. It's making small quantities of beer, good beers, and meet with the people who are going to enjoy it. Yeah, you must be idiot to yeah. to start a brewery in a manner. Just look at the place, at the space we have. Yeah, so wow. it's why I'm tough cleaning. Yeah, yeah, I'm really happy to see you because I feel more the most idiot of the world. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I it's like you see, it's not easy to work here because yeah. we have no space. We have no, nothing to go as a, a forklift or something like that. We have to, to take everything by hand, and uh, so it's a hard work. But uh, it's a part of the, the misery things. It, it's why we are misery. <laughs> I'm not idiots. <laughs> and idiots. <laughs> That's what I think to myself. I say to myself every evening when I go to sleep. You know, you must be idiotic to start a brewery in a manner. It's Just a crazy twice. project, but. I love it. Well, you, you could make the Guinness Book of World Records uh, for the tiniest brewery <laughs> space. Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Go ahead. Thanks. Watch out. Wow. Okay. You guys don't stab yourselves or anything. Or oh, we do it every day. <laughs> it's our daily routine. Yeah. It's the routine. Have bruises. Yeah. Suffer <laughs> for your craft. Yeah. So, so this is your. Labeling machine? Yeah. Our uh, labeling we machine. Made some mm. here. Okay. Actually, nice. it's not ours. We rent that one uh -huh. uh, to one goes because we have to. Uh, ours is coming next October. Yeah. So. Okay. So it's late because of the situation. The so you're going doing cans throughout, no bottles or yeah. We we, we are we making some bottles. We are making some bottle of. Uh, uh, Ch uh, Chardonnay. Okay. Uh, oh, the big uh, 75. Or only yeah. 75 bottles. Only for yeah. the uh, bottle age beer. Um, so here it's the place we are making some uh, mixed fermentation beer. Uh, only for uh, the bottle. We did not can that kind of beer here. So. The first week uh, we start to brew here, we start with uh, some grisette that we age in the Moselle uh, wine. Uh, it's coming from the area, so it was logical for us to work with that kind of uh, barrel. 
and uh, we make some uh, food up here with the grisettes and we, we try to make some different kind of uh, grisettes so uh, all the, the grisettes we grew here uh, spend some time in the fermenter over there that you can see and go after uh, for aging in the fooder and the fooder is uh, now uh, big <laughs> Beginning to be wild, <laughs> and uh, oh, you're getting some. <coughs> that's a spontaneous wild, yeah. Uh, it was uh, it was the, the the plan for us. <laughs> oh, <really>? yeah. <laughs> so, but now it starts to begin to be really interesting for us, and we are really uh, waiting to to making some bottle and uh, did that because uh, it was cool to make some can and IPA and everything, but. Uh, it's, uh, it's important for us. Yeah, it's important for us to make that kind of uh, bottle here and uh, sour uh, grisette and uh, uh, making some different age style for the grisette. Uh, Excellent. And, uh, the people can taste that. Uh, so. And here we can. Have you see released it. some of those yet, or are you still? Oh no, we start to brew uh, six weeks ago, and we only make some bowl here and the fooder. So we have to wait. Now we taste uh, every two or three days, uh, but they need some time, and uh, we will brew another fresh grisette uh, next week, and we will blend that because now it's really uh, we can feel <laughs> the <laughs> bread and uh, it's really wild okay. so I will blend that and uh, try to make something uh, balanced, balanced well balanced and uh, so it's the start and uh, we are I feel like I play <laughs> you know I have to understand uh, everything here and uh, but uh, I think uh, next year we will, we will be able to sell some bottle. I am here in my hometown. I am born and raised uh, close to here. Um, I know that place since I'm a kid and I was uh, fascinated by the, the, the manor and the forest uh, here. And I, um, I, I moved uh, for the school uh, in Liège. After that, in the city of Liège, and I, we, I meet Samia uh, 15 years ago now, uh, and I was born in a family of uh, brewers. So uh, it was the, the, the work of my grandfather, the work of my uh, uncle and uh, father did the same things. What and was their brewery? Uh, what was the name? A big brewery in uh, Liège. <laughs> So it was Pied de Boeuf and uh, Jupiler. Uh, so now it's becoming uh, Interbou and after in Bev. And yeah. yeah, so I spent some time up there well, as a student worker. And um, it was a, a, a way for me to make some brew, so to start in the, the the beer, you know, I, I don't know how to say that in English, but it, it was English just a family thing to work in the, the beer, but uh, I was the only one uh, who have to make something else in the family. So I spent 10 years to make something else. Uh, I learned uh, electromechanic in the school, which is not the same. And uh, But finally, I go back uh, in the school, I was uh, 30. 30, mm -hmm. uh, to learn uh, how to brew in the, the Institut Maurice in Brussels uh, because I was uh, in love with the beer for real, just not, just not about drinking some beer. I enjoy to drink some good beer and taste the beer and uh, we start to brew together before that. Uh, so. Uh, I feel that I have no background uh, and I start to go back to the school at 30 uh, in the Institut Maurice. And after that, I found a place in uh, Montréal 
to learn uh, how to make some uh, craft beer in the Institut Brassicole uh, de Montréal. It was really interesting for me to, to just go after my school in Belgium to see uh, how it was different and how oh, they, don't, they don't feel the pressure about the, the tradition or folklore. Or, it's a nice thing and I am humble ab about that, I have to do that. But uh, we feel that every day when we make a brewery in Belgium. There is uh, everything was made in Belgium. Everything is already was already did before and better than us for sure. So we have to be humble, not arrogant, nothing like that. We have always to be our, uh, humble, and uh, we are not here to make a revolution about beer. We are just here to make the beer we love to drink, and. Uh, uh, it's important for us to to make that we are not. Uh, I don't feel that I'm. I don't. I don't feel like I uh, am a part of a revolution or something like that. I feel really that we are making something different, but with uh, some respect and uh, something else. Just something else. But uh, we enjoy to drink some. Uh, Beer, Belgian beer, and uh, like I told you before, I drink some <laughs> industrial pills <laughs> when I, hey, I was thirsty. Yeah, and uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's like that. And uh, <laughs> there's one beer I do like. <laughs> yeah, so beers and stuff. so I just we enjoy uh, the, to live in Belgium and drink some beer. And what's your background in beer? Did you come through beer through Remy, or did you just? Uh, I knew nothing about beer before I met Remy. Like, you know, like every Belgian student when being in university, you always tend to drink, but not very good beers. So I couldn't say that I learned anything about beers being a student. I actually learned about <laughs> beer when I met him and when he made me discover some different taste, like entirely new landscapes in beer to me. So it was very interesting. I thought started drinking it then we started brewing you know on a small scale like uh, home brewing and it was just fascinating to see the way the yeast can you know transform completely what you have the work you have in the beginning and actually make your own beer so it just opened new horizons to me that's about the time only make you, he didn't only make you clean, man. You were actually brewing. <laughs> <laughs> <That's all right. laughs> we were brewing, both of us. But yeah, he always was a step ahead of me because he, at the time, he started studying, you know, brewing, brewing sciences. And we already had kids. I had to work. Yeah. Background. Oh yeah, it, it is. <laughs> it is. <laughs> okay. So go ahead, start it. Yeah. Just so to continue. Um, I really learned about brewing with him, and at the time, I unfortunately didn't have the time to take a whole uh, master in brewing science like he did because we had kids, and I had another work, and we needed to eat. So I just uh, took some evening classes in brewing. And then when he finished in Belgium, we left to go to Canada and study together in Montreal in the Institut Brassicole du Québec. So that was the second part of my training in beer. And it was really interesting because it was indeed so different from what we learned in Belgium. And it's very complementary. Like, you know, we needed those two uh, backgrounds to actually make the brewery we're doing today. So it's a very interesting experience, and we also took the time to visit a lot of brewers to work. You took time to work in breweries too in Canada, in Vermont, in US too, and we made a whole um, network of contacts through this, the, these uh, uh, stays and trips. And your two-year project here, you bought this place. And you were talking about all the brewer friends coming over, so that's the whole network. You said you had something like a hundred brewers at some time. Uh, it's, it starts when I was learning. Uh, when I was in the school in uh, Montreal, we make some contact over there, and I received. 
it's a it's a nice place to live because they are easy people and uh, I uh, I love that country and uh, hopefully we buy that place before we go in Quebec because <laughs> yeah I think if we hadn't had the manor already at the time we probably wouldn't be back <laughs> yeah. because we felt really comfortable in Canada but then we had that project already coming up we were all set planning to move in the manner just when we came back from Canada so we did and we got here two years ago and started straight away the renovation and as we said we worked first on the apartment for brewers for friends family and brewers and that's how we had so many people staying in the manor since we got here it's like an open apartment we just give it to people we like and we want to meet with and spend some time with but It led us to have so many incredible encounters and exchange, and it's just so rich and enriching to us. It was the best thing that happened to us was having this apartment in the manor because it opened just new perspective. And, and yeah, for, it's not yeah. only friends; it's also friends from friends. So we expanded the yeah, and network. Yeah, I'm really. so happy for the kids. Like I tell you, we see we moved here two years ago. I was living in uh, in uh, Louvain-la-Neuve, close to Brussels. It was really a different uh, kind of life. Uh, nothing bad, but nothing good, really. And uh, I, I I I have to come back with the kids to 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 live here. I, I miss that place uh, with the forest and everything and uh, the easy life. Maybe slow down a little bit, and uh, it's the the spirit of uh, Wallonia. I'm not ashamed of that. I'm proud of that kind of way, and uh, I understand that for the rest of the country, it's not easy to understand. But uh, we have to be proud to be living here, be slow, and uh, enjoy life, kids, and uh, making some good thing. But uh, we take the time, so uh, I have to come back here with the kids to learn <laughs> but uh, I say that but uh, in another hand we work here for two years every night every day and uh, they see that they they understand that we have to work hard to make something and uh, it's like a school for the kids and uh, we receive some people for from the North American they start to learn to speak English They are easier uh, to to speak with some people, and uh, it's why I feel that now I am okay with the decision. <laughs> Two weeks ago, I was not, <laughs> because I was really scared uh, to open the brewery in uh, in the middle of nowhere. But now I feel that we will be understand, and uh, and I'm sure that when the people will come here they they will understand the spirit and uh, more than the beer it's 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 not about only it's not only about the beer misery it's only uh, it's, it's only a lifestyle, yeah yes. it's a lifestyle yeah and uh, you encourage music here i see exactly and, yeah. uh, artists and yeah so uh, the yeah, our brewer well, is uh, an artist he's a drummer uh, yeah we we Everybody here plays some music in the the team, and uh, it's not. I don't search for <laughs> that, but it's like that. And uh, I I I feel that it's uh, comfortable for me that uh, we understand uh, each other with the music. We work on music, and uh, when the people come here, they can hear some music, and uh, we, for sure. When uh, it's gonna be over with the 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 COVID, the COVID crisis. Uh, crisis, we will be here every Friday to make some uh, acoustic show in uh, in the brew pub. Why misery? How did you come about <laughs> that name? <laughs> because is it? <laughs> yeah, it's both because we were inspired by uh, Stephen King's book, oh. and also you know the mother the one and that. off the feet and. Yeah, exactly, yeah. but yeah, that, yeah. <laughs> you know, the whole universe he created in his book has some similarities with the manor in the area here, and on the other hand, yeah, like Femi said, it was a uh, hell of a misery road to get to this project running, so it came naturally somehow, Yeah, it's misery. 
is it <laughs> for sure and it's another way you know I, I we choose the name it was a little bit like that uh, when we see the house it was uh, really bad in a bad shape and it was in the winter with a lot of snow here and uh, the snow stay for some weeks <laughs> it's not just a little bit of snow we we came back after and i feel the that there was something like in the, the book but most of all for us it was really uh i don't know how to say that but it's really difficult to make uh to make a brew in belgium and it's why we are misery because uh we we see that there is a lot of new brewery and uh i am always uh, happy to see that there were some young people who start a project to make their own beer. We have to be uh, protect, protective with the, that kind of guy because they are making some great job. It's not easy. I know that more than everybody. And uh, we are here to help uh, the other. I am not feeling uh, concurrence. Uh, competitor. competitor. No, I don't feel like that. I, I want to help more more craft brew. It's more people who enjoy good beer, less people who drink uh, micro, macro beer, and it's uh, all good for us. There was no not too much uh, craft beer in Belgium. And you talked about the fear. I mean, it took a lot of guts to open up <laughs> during COVID, right? Were you afraid because bars have s slowed down buying? Your market is local, I assume, and yeah. uh, you're not exporting. Well, you can't, uh, but no. do you hope to, you know, you took guts to do it, but you had to do it because that was your plan. Um, and uh, where do you go from here? Ah. <laughs> Both, <laughs> together, we decide to not sell our beer in, in, in Brussels or something like that. Uh, in keg or it was a choice we made uh, two years before and now I feel that I have no choice you know Covid has I, impacted um, us a lot because we're we opened like four months late but you know given the short summer time that we have it has a huge impact on us so we had to start on both markets let's say the area around the manor, the manor and selling it in the manor itself and going into bars and breweries that we know and that we like. Like with uh, Barbator and Dynamo. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I saw Wait. you were doing it. Barbator is right next to where I live. So yeah. yeah. Okay. And, and we and enjoy Sepp. going in these places. I love this, this his bar. I love uh, going to Dynamo, to Hermitage, Mouth Attacks, you yeah. know. So it also came like naturally. And he speaks, Jeslin, uh, it, East was telling me how wonderful you guys were and <coughs> really supported you. Eve. Uh, no. Zenlin. Oh, okay, East. the East. Oh, okay. Wait, wait, East. <laughs> oh, yeah, we have Sorry, to go French. over there. See, that's no, 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 okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. No, no, no. Yeah, we have to go over there. And uh, But I was uh, really afraid because we receive everything, all the the old brew kit in the second uh, weeks of March and it was the first day of the lockdown so there was no worker to help me to uh, build uh, the brew kit the technician never the, came yeah they don't receive any passport or the right to come in Belgium so we I was alone with uh, Samia and she started to learn uh, <laughs> Or to Mechanical. build, yeah, Mechanical. she started to learn on YouTube or something like that uh, by herself to help me, and uh, she, I'm proud of her because she make, uh, she worked with me to build the brew kit, and uh, at the end of March we received some help from a guy called uh, Christian Van Averbeek. He was working on uh, La Chouf. He's an engineer. And uh, he helped me every day here uh, to weld. Uh, yeah, to weld the pipes. Of the the pipes and everything. Had to be assembled. And I'm grateful with that that guy because we were three to build everything uh, on uh, three months. Incredible. 
Yeah. <laughs> it's a misery story. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. So no. Uh, and I'm so now you're doing things to try and keep ahead and keep alive and. No. As you're saying, you're now selling outside your plan, your It's not adjusting. the plan. Yeah, I was, uh, when I was learning, when I was in the school uh, in Vermont, I, we spent some time, in the, a lot of time in The Alchemist. And uh, he, he was different than the other brewery because he, he was more about the quality of a beer. And uh, he, he don't care about making some uh, new beer every month, or um, he have maybe three or four beer, and he, he, he probably have the most beautiful brewery in uh, in Vermont. And uh, the yeah, I understand that, and I feel more like that guy making some beer and always getting better. And I don't care about the hype or. Uh, I like to drink IPA, I like to drink sour beer, so we will do that here. And uh, maybe we will be slow. <laughs> I don't know how to say it, we'll be much slower than the others. No, you yeah. take it easy and take it I and take it perfect easy. your craft, yeah. is that... Yeah. Yeah.